In order for us as teachers, leaders, educators, coaches to use the concept of growth mindset in order to help people, we are leading and coaching and teaching to maximize their brain, uh, which really until now we've underestimated how powerful the brain is. In order for us to do that, we need to not only, like I mentioned in my first video, understand the mechanics of mindset, but also we, um, it can be helpful for us to understand that there are reasons why it doesn't end up working um, and there's resistance and challenges to it. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about three reasons why growth mindset doesn't work and then five steps we can take to help minimize some of those challenges and resistance. So the first reason why growth mindset doesn't work is that there is what I call a hyper belief in it, um, meaning that people are uh, getting into the idea of growth mindset, um, perseverance and effort and praising all those things, but they're not taking into consideration much deeper environmental um, factors that contribute to a person's uh, potential that's been expressed until now, their level of intelligence and all those things. So some things we're not taking into consideration are the stress, um, the stress that a person is experiencing right now that comes from their environment. Um, it could be socioeconomic, it can be violence, it can be um, so many different things. And we're also not even going into the deeper levels of, for example, the m amount of stress that a mother is experiencing, that also um, affects brain architecture and cognitive development of a child. So we need to understand those, not to write people off um, because of their environment or what they've experienced up until now, um, but in order to reflect on new strategies and innovative ideas of how to um, work with someone for new processes, new strategies, um, new reflections, so that we're taking into account that they might be at a different starting point um, or they might be at just a different, different levels of stress and mindset and beliefs that somebody who's coming from an environment where there's much less stress, socioeconomic stress or less violence or whatever other factors are happening. So we need to really um, not go into this exaggerated ticket to everything um, about the mindset um, because we also need to consider so many other factors that are happening in order to be way more reflective and authentic as we search for new processes. So it's not just about effort and perseverance, it's also about reflecting on um, strategies and um, not just celebrating mistakes and saying, yay, you got it wrong, but also reflecting on why the person might be continuously getting it wrong. So there's a deep level of self-reflection that has to happen and consideration of so many other factors. Number two reason why it doesn't work is something Carol Dweck calls the false growth mindset, which is that um, people are using the terminology, they're even setting up the right posters and they're doing all these activities but they haven't really um, internalized it. And so like one saying um, coming from different education research is that the best teachers are the best learners. So um, it's important for us if we are planning to talk about growth mindset that we are also continuously learning, challenging ourselves, learning new concepts, questioning and critically thinking about it um, and noticing our own dips and our own times where we're really not doing well at something and what we do to get out of those dips and how we reflect on it so that when we're talking about growth mindset, it's authentic. We're giving authentic personal examples and personal examples and storytelling are really powerful ways to present this idea instead of just talking about it and explaining it. So um, moving, you know, get, getting out of that uh, kind of the false inauthentic growth mindset and moving into a more deeper personal reflection on it. Um, and third is a rejection of the growth mindset concept. And I think that, that a lot of that is coming from rejection or resistance, is coming from people listening to people who have this hyper belief or the false growth mindset, not even seeing particularly beneficial results or also just really resisting how um, the, the depth and self-reflection that needs to happen. So a lot of people I think are just being surrounded by this overhyped buzzword and it's causing them to reject and resist this concept um, because they're not learning about it from people who have really, really understood it on a deeper level. So the five ways that we can kind of overcome and, and push through some of these challenges. The first is um, just moving away from 
this very archaic way of thinking that things are either or um, and immediately pushing people into a, in, into a category that you're either growth mindset or fixed mindset. Um, like Carol Dweck says, it's not a proclamation, it's a process and a journey and we all have different levels of each of these at different moments of the day, different phases of our life, different environments. So as soon as we start kind of using this to label or categorize people, um, we're actually moving into a fixed mindset because it's acting as though people are just one way and not another. We need to be able to hold different things at the same time, different perspectives. So moving away from this exaggerated extremes and the either or. Um, number two is really getting much deeper into the concept of neuroplasticity and specifically how environment and experience affects and builds brain architecture um, so that we are taking into consideration way uh, deeper cultural, socioeconomic, um, all of those things and how they have affected um, people's brain architecture to understand that they are coming in from totally different perspectives and different exposure to different data, which is going to affect their mindset and their ability to learn. So we really, we need to be getting into much deeper conversations about all of those things. And then in line with that, um, understanding the difference between two types of neuro neuroplasticity, things that affect our brain architecture, bottom up stimulus and top down. So bottom up is that um, things from the external environment can affect us, also including the womb that the environment can affect um, how our brains are getting wired, but to not use that as a reason to write people off, um, but to also understand that we also have top-down processes, meaning self-directed um, meta processes where we are using our mind in new ways through things like uh, imagination and visualization and different techniques like that, um, that we can use our mind to rewire our, our brain. So both, both are very important. If we only talk about top-down, um, that we can use our mind to rewire our brain, we're, we're not taking into consideration how much the environment has already affected us in many ways. And if we only talk about environment, that it's external stuff, we can write people off and say that people are lost causes because we haven't taken into consideration the top-down. So we need to understand both, both of these processes, um, layers of neuroplasticity. The fourth thing is that modeling um, is way more powerful, effective, and efficient than instruction and explanations. And I know that I am <laughs> instructing and using words and explanations for this, um, but part of this is that I have gone through a lot of my own work to really internalize this so that you're hearing what I call the biofeedback of authenticity. You're hearing that um, I have very authentic and passionate uh, kind of um, a vibe about me when I'm talking about this because I've seen it and I apply it to my own life regularly. So, um, but the other aspect of this is that when it comes to teaching this to other people, it's important for all of us to understand that it's what we're modeling in moment to moment interaction. So if I just talked about it like this, and then in day-to-day -day life, my students or people that I'm leading in an organization are not seeing me um, celebrate my own failures and understand the refinement process, or taking into all these other these things into consideration, they'd have a harder time believing me. So, and just in terms of how our brain works, we are much stronger learners when we're seeing things modeled because there's so much more data that's coming at us um, for, from that person. Instead of just the words, we're, we're reading their biofeedback, their movements, their moment to moment processes and reflections. So modeling being much more important. And then along with that, way more talk and movement about grown-ups and the grown-ups um, mindset. So we um, tend to jump very quickly to children's mindsets. I think we need much more of a movement surrounding the grown-ups um, uh, in the room and how grown-ups are moving between fixed and growth mindsets. So the teachers, uh, the leaders, the parents, the policy makers, we need a lot more talk and a lot more um, of you know, going into what the grown-ups are doing and their mindsets instead of jumping right to what the children are doing and their mindsets. And then uh, finally, um, just more questioning in general of science because part of the reason we have uh, fixed ideas about uh, intelligence and talent and that we don't understand many of these things is that we haven't questioned science enough and science has led us to very outdated and sometimes completely inaccurate ideas so questioning of the science and also because we're getting bombarded from so many different angles with 
different news sources and authorities that I think we need to be way more critical of, um, going deeper and holding different perspectives at the same time, so even having conversations with people that may not agree with us, so that we can hold different perspectives. So um, those are the quick summary. Uh, the, the resistance and the challenges are hyper-belief, not taking into effect, uh, consideration deeper factors, um, false growth mindset, um, talking about it and not really um, internalizing and infusing it into moment-to-moment -moment interactions about our own life, and resistance coming from people learning about it, from people who are demonstrating more of these types of um, kind of uh, concepts. And then the five things we can do, moving away from the extremes, either or, and the labeling, because that actually just demonstrates this idea of a fixed mindset in itself, that environment and experience are huge factors in brain architecture. We need to think of it so that we can come up with more innovative strategies on how to help go to the deepest layers of um, improving conditions for people who may be affected in negative ways by their environment and their experiences. So that more of us are thinking about what we can do um, to help get to those deeper, deeper layers of, of our own humanity and human experience. Um, and then looking at bottom up and top down uh, neuroplasticity coming from the environment and um, our own mind and modeling versus instruction, modeling being more important and that we need way more adult models of this in order for the kids to get it. Adults to be truly modeling it and more questioning of science and um, where we're getting our information from. So those are some ideas of how to uh, expand and hopefully amplify the idea of growth mindset in really powerful, empowering ways that are also compassionate and taking into consideration how much environment and experience affects us and also in the empowering way of knowing that we can do things that can help us rewire and learn um, even like despite some of the circumstances that some people are facing. So I hope um, those help and uh, thanks for watching. You can also visit my website at stephaniefayfrank.com. Thanks.